The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that what is what was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? Do not tax collectors do the same. And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians is applauding them and encouraging them at the same time for their generosity to take care of the poor in the various Christian communities, especially in Jerusalem. And this is about mostly financial generosity he's talking about. So see, they were taking collections even in those days. However, I want to take that generosity and look at it in a different way this morning. Applying this to the gospel. Unless we are generous, we will never reach perfection. Unless we are generous, we will never reach perfection. And we're talking about spiritual perfection here, which is eventually reflected in the way we are materialistically generous with our, our friends, our family, our church. And I have some interesting news for you. You're not going to be perfect until you're dead. Perfection is about something that exists that comes to a completion. That's when it's perfected. For us, perfection is the realization of the resurrection of Jesus and where we will be taken up into the glory of heaven and we will be perfected then. On the road to perfection, though, is our task of striving for that. The generosity comes insofar as the way Jesus addresses his disciples. And he's talking in this passage to his disciples. Not the crowd, his disciples. What's the difference? The crowd are the people who are curious about Jesus. The disciples are the people who want to be like Jesus. Is that you? In order to do that, there's a generosity that is required. Jesus is calling his disciples to rise above lukewarmness, which has nothing to do with generosity. He's calling his disciples to go beyond lukewarmness in their Christianity. Jesus is calling his disciples even to give generously in suffering. How do you like that? But didn't he suffer? In the, it's in the suffering that Jesus laid down his life for each other. And indeed, 
generally when we're in relationships we will end up having to suffer but it brings our spiritual life to perfection and it also perfects love because true love is sacrificial it's about the other not about the me and so that requires generosity in and of itself to be generously self-giving and so Jesus can say this because he willed to do it for all of the world which became very apparent at Calvary if I'm gonna say I'm part of the body of Christ then I can't be separated from Christ's suffering and I can't be separated from involving Christ's suffering in my own life as I participate in the ministry of the suffering of Christ by giving my life for others when it is necessary. Perfection then, we could say, is the generous, incessant movement toward growth in sanctity for us. Let me say that again. Perfection is the generous, incessant movement toward growth in sanctity. It's all about making Jesus everything. And granted, in this life, we will have difficulty with that, which means not that we're imperfect, it means that we're not perfect yet. And so we are in process. And so perfection is this incessant movement and heroic at times, a movement against the way of the world, a time, to, a time of striving toward the way of Jesus Christ as opposed to the way of the world. Devotion to the Holy Eucharist and especially to the Mass, is the embodiment of the first three commandments, to love the Lord your God. To not take the name of the Lord in vain. And to honor the Sabbath. These three first commandments are embodied and cemented in the Eucharist and in the Holy Mass. Reconciliation then for us, another sacrament here becomes the platform of humility for us. You have to be humble to go to confession. If you don't go to confession humbly, then you're going to leave with the sin of pride. And so we go humbly. We go humbly because we understand that it's only if I bow to Jesus that I can be perfected. It's in humility that he calls us to turn to grace, the grace of Christ who helps us in our time of need, that impels us to this path of perfection. From St. Cyprian this morning in the Liturgy of the Hours, he said, since we call God our Father, we must behave like children like his children, so that he will be pleased with us. And this is the path of perfection. Be perfect. And so we pray daily. We experience the sacraments properly. We take advantage of the sacrament of reconciliation as we work through and climb out of our imperfection with the help of the grace of God. And finally, all this is consummated by the complete fruition of what was begun at baptism when Christ placed his life in us so that we could be perfect as he is perfect with the Heavenly Father and we are perfected in our Heavenly Father, standing before the glory of all the angels and the saints. Regina Jenny, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque menum isti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit,
Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.